All right, what's on the bench today? Um, I have two of these. So, um, a uh, estate, um, I had access to the things this guy had in his estate. And uh, he was really an audio guy. He loved uh, working with audio stuff. He was an analog engineer. And uh, he had a lot of things that were specialized for, for audio stuff. And this is a couple that was in his bin. Um, and these are Hammond 560G isolation transformers. So they have an input and then they have an output B and C. But this, this one is insulated. So completely DC insulated on this side. And it actually has a shield in it. So if these are fancy... Uh, these are real fancy transformers. I'll open it up. You can see inside. And I have two of them. I don't know why I needed two. This one has a graph on the back. I'm not so sure what about this graph he did, though, because um, we'll make another one for ourselves. Because this does not match the data sheet. So I'm not sure exactly how he measured that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, peek inside, peek inside this thing. Yeah. So inside you can see the uh, you can see the Hammond uh, 560G. It has uh, windings, uh, double windings on the input and double windings on the output. So these are 300 ohms and 300 ohms. So you can do them in series and get 600 ohms. And you can do them in parallel and get 150. And the box is wild, wired for its parallel mode. And then you can. Uh, uh, normally you would have these as a one-to-one -one ratio, but you could have them as a different ratio if you wanted to. Um, and uh, the transformer is just potted in this, uh, in this thing. And then uh, it's actually wire wrapped. Uh, he actually attached this with wire wrapping. Not a very good job of wire wrapping either, but <laughs> that's what he used. The transformer has long leads and they're square, so they, they lend themselves to wire wrapping, and that's the way he he decided to build it. I would have built it differently, but uh, there you go. And then he attached the uh, BNCs to the case with um, uh, that black epoxy. Uh, what's that stuff called? I can never remember that stuff. <laughs> anyway, the black epoxy. Um, and put little rubber feet on the bottom. That's kind of cute. So anyway, that's what's inside. These, these transformers, I think, are like $75 or something like that. So they ain't cheap to buy. Made in Canada. There you go. All right, let's look at a couple of data sheets here. Uh, Hammond, quality products, service, excellence. Um, audio broadcast quality. Uh, there's several versions of this, different, different impedances. Uh, rugged black epoxy, nine pin connections, blah, blah, blah. Typical from 30 hertz to 30 kilohertz. Uh, insertion loss, uh, 1 dB maximum. Um, they look alike at this. So uh, there is a uh, 12, to f 12 ohms to 150 ohms, or 48 to 160, 600, uh, for... I don't know for something. You can get you can get them in different. Uh, can you read that? You can get them in different uh, different versions here. We've got the G version, good for isolating. Um, so yeah, let's see uh, what else we got going here. Uh, let's see. Here's a data sheet for the actual uh, actual G version. Um, Frequency range is 30 to 30 kilohertz. And uh, here's some inductances and uh, resistances and things like that. And here's a, here's a Bode plot or a, a response plot. It doesn't have phase, so I guess it's not Bode. Um, and uh, it sort of stays pretty flat. It's got a little roll off at the two ends. But uh, pretty flat. I think we should uh, try to reproduce this, measure the uh, measure the response curve ourselves. All right, this is the way they say you should test it. Uh, we have a uh, function generator coming in, 
and we have some resistance on both inputs and then uh, a load on the output. We're a 75, I mean, we're a, um, a um, 150 ohm system in and out. So I'm gonna have 100 ohms and 100 ohms. The generator itself has 50 ohms, so we'll have 150 total here. And the output, I'll put 150 ohm load on it, okay? So that's what I've got right underneath here. Uh, 100, 100, no, I'm sorry, 50, 50, yeah, 50, 50, plus 50 is, that. I said it wrong. So 50 ohms plus 50 ohms plus 50 ohms give me 150 here. And then on this side, uh, we'll have 150. There we go. And then uh, we'll run a signal through and we'll do a uh, frequency response. All right, so we're gonna do uh, 10 hertz. It won't let me go any lower than 10 hertz. I wish I could do one hertz, but it only will only go down to 10 hertz. 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz. Uh, input is source one, output is source two, which is the, I mean, um, the uh, scope probes, right? And then um, 50 ohms. So let's run the analysis. And um, it will first auto scale. And the uh, yellow trace is input, the green trace is output. So a little bit of loss in the system, not a lot. And then it will run through its numbers. All right, so there we go. Um, let's get rid of these traces up here. They don't do any good. And we'll make the Bode plot uh, cleaner. So there we go. This is a, a 0 dB, 1 dB, 2 dB. So right around 0.8 dB of loss. And it's uh, pretty flat. It rises just a little tiny bit and then it rolls off. Um, so that's pretty close to what the data sheet is saying also. We'll get a little bit of roll off down this away. Now we can save this data. We can go here to File, Save. And uh, you select which one and it says Frequency Response Analysis. That's what we want to save. And we'll save that and it goes on to our USB drive. So there we go. All right, well, now I have a couple uh, isolation transformers, so if I ever need them. They're good for getting rid of hum or getting rid of ground loops in, uh, in audio systems. Uh, you can float one side, so they do come in handy once in a while.